It's time for the 420 Radio News, covering the latest headlines in consumer cannabis, medical marijuana, and industrial hemp. Transcripts of 420 Radio News are available daily on our website at 420radio.org. Now, here's Priscilla Simon. Hi folks, this is your 420 Radio News for Wednesday, June 18, 2014. New York Governor Andrew Cuomo attempts to run the clock out on medical marijuana, uh, rather, attempts to run the clock out on medical marijuana. On Tuesday, the governor says he'll not sign the latest iteration of the medical marijuana bill that was amended late Monday to make the Thursday legis- legislative signing deadline. Lawmakers took out coverage for diabetes, lupus, and post-concussion syndrome and reduced the possession limit from two and a half to two ounces. But Governor Cuomo complains that not including a ban on marijuana smoking and the five-year sunset provision is a deal breaker. Lawmakers have pressed the governor's office to provide medical, medical marijuana language that the governor would approve, but the governor explains, quote, I don't want to get into the negotiations with the Senate leadership and the assembly leadership, end quote. Medical marijuana is supported by 88% of voters and 93% of Democrats in recent polls, but it remains unclear whether the, the legislature will put Governor Cuomo in the uncomfortable position of vetoing a popular issue in an election year. Well, they should. They should force him to have to live up to this when, you know, so many people, more than nine out of 10 Democrats uh, support medical marijuana. He should be forced to have to explain to each and every one of them why he wants to keep medicine away from sick cancer and AIDS patients, why he thinks people with lupus deserve to remain in pain, why people that have post-concussion syndrome should be denied the most effective medicine for post-concussion syndrome. This is uh, this is political hardball, and he needs to have to pay a price on this. If the uh, if the Senate and the Assembly compromise any further on this bill, it's just going to lead the next reticent governor, like maybe Pennsylvania's Tom Corbett, to know that they can just keep whittling away at medical marijuana, whittle away as much of it as they can, and everybody on our side will just capitulate to it. It's time for us to take a stand, draw a line in the sand, draw a line in the sand, and say no more. You can cut no more from this bill. His sudden reticence to want to sign this bill and sudden need to discuss these uh, different issues he has are things he could have brought up two months ago when this bill was first being proposed. The fact that he left it until now to talk about it shows that he's not negotiating in good faith. It just shows he's trying to run out the clock and try to avoid any controversy on medical marijuana before he has to face re-election. Let's not let him avoid that controversy. Let's put him in a bad position and force him to have to veto a medical marijuana bill and then explain that to Democratic voters. Former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton told CNN's Christine Amanpour that, quote, there should be availability of medical marijuana for patients, quote, in extreme medical conditions. Secretary Clinton's latest remark represent a, quote, evolution in her position that evokes comparison to President Obama's evolution on the topic of gay marriage, as, a, as majority public support for both topics continues to grow. So, at the risk of committing radical candor, said Secretary Clinton, I have to say I think we need to be very clear about the benefits of marijuana use for, me, for medicinal purposes. I don't think we've done enough research yet. Although I think for people who are in extreme medical conditions and who have anecdotal evidence that it works, there should be availability under appropriate circumstances. But I do think we need more research because we don't know how it interacts with other drugs." When Secretary Clinton was running for president in 2008, she shared her opinion on marijuana legalization when she said, Quote, I don't think we should decriminalize, but we ought to do research into what, if any, medical benefits marijuana has, end quote. In her latest interview, Secretary Clinton said, quote, on recreational, states are the, are the laboratories of democracy. We have at least two states that are experimenting with that right now. I want to wait and see what the evidence is, end quote. As for whether she, like her husband, quote, tried marijuana and didn't like it, didn't inhale and never tried it again, end quote, Secretary Clinton empathetically stated, quote, absolutely not. I didn't do it when I was young. I'm not going to start now. 
Well, perhaps Secretary Clinton, you ought to start now. <laughs> Maybe it would lighten you up a little bit. Uh, this is going to be so fun to watch as the mounting evidence for medical marijuana continues to grow as more than, you know, by the time 2016 rolls around, I think we'll have more than half of the states with some sort of medical marijuana program. We'll have four states with marijuana legalization and another four looking to legalize. Democrats are going to be like trying to turn around a cruise ship it's going to be slow. It's going to be a long arc, but they've got to find a way to turn around on this because they're going to lose their base. And at any minute now, I tell you, the young Republicans are going to start picking up on this issue and they're going to start leaving the Democrats behind. Hillary Clinton is just the first of these Democrats to attempt this pivot on their marijuana positions. And, uh, you know, I welcome any anybody who's going to want to support uh, marijuana legalization, but I'd rather have someone who has always supported it because it's the right thing to do, not someone who is coming around to support it because it's the politically expedient thing to do. Lawmakers in Delaware have amended a marijuana legalization proposal to be just a, decriminal, a marijuana decriminalization proposal. Democrat Representative Colleen Keeley is sponsoring the legislation that would reduce Delaware's criminal misdemeanor for marijuana possession which could lead to six months in jail and an $1,150 in, fi $1 in fines to a non-arrestable civil citation with a $250 fine that doubles if unpaid in 90 days. The legislation had opposed to simply legal legalize possession of up to an ounce of marijuana, but that was strongly opposed by the Delaware State Police, who, along with other law enforcers, made over 2,600 arrests for marijuana possession in 2013. The new decriminalization proposal has made it out of committee and awaits the vote of the full house, which is only in session for another week. Yeah, it's a shame that Delaware has kind of wimped out on going for full legalization and has reduced it to just decriminalization. But it puts them along in line with most of the other states in the region that have marijuana decriminalization. Only uh, New Jersey, New York, and New Hampshire of all the New England states still maintain criminal arrests for small amounts of marijuana. So Delaware is at least making the right move and uh, reducing this to just a fine, you know, $250 fine for an ounce would make it the 20th state to decriminalize marijuana. Uh, it's a shame it's happening so late in the session, kind of like the New York situation. They've only got one more week to work on this. Let's hope these lawmakers can uh, put it on the fast track and end the arrest of over 2,600 Delaware residents every year for marijuana possession. North Carolina is stumbling in its attempt to enact the strictest CBD-only medical marijuana law in the nation. A hearing scheduled yesterday to discuss CBD-only legislation was canceled just before it was to start, with no indication that the hearing would be rescheduled anytime soon, if at all. The bill would allow for the use of high CBD slash low THC cannabis oil only by people suffering from intractable epilepsy. It would not be avail available for epileptic children, only adults 18 years of age or older. The epileptic adult must have first been evaluated by a neurologist and must have tried at least three non-cannabis treatment options before being allowed to try non-psychoactive CBD oil. Patients would also have to pay $50 to be tracked in a state database accessible to law enforcement. Wow, this is one of those scenarios where, gee, I'm really sorry this didn't get a hearing. <laughs> I mean, what a terrible bill we're talking about here. I it's just amazing to me that we have this Sanjay Gupta documentary and everybody sees the miracle of this little girl uh, healing from her epilepsy thanks to CBD oil. These states rush out to make these CBD oil bills and even that's too much for North Carolina. Even non-psychoactive CBD oil for kids, well, that's too much. It can't be for kids. You have to be 18 or older. 18 or older. So like you're going to turn to some parent who's got a five-year-old who's seizing a hundred times a day and you're going to say, ah, got to wait till he's uh, 18. Got to wait another 13 years if he lives that long. This is just cruel. It's cruel to give these people hope like this and so cruel to narrow it down so much 
so afraid they are that some healthy person might smoke pot. They've got to narrow it down so much that it's not smokable plant. It's just CBD oil. It's not for cancer or AIDS or anything else that could help. It's just for epilepsy. It's not for anybody that has epilepsy, just people 18 and older. And not for anybody 18 and older that has epilepsy, but they have to have been verified by a neurologist. But not just verified by a neurologist. They have to have, have tried three other treatments and not had them work before they can try the cannabis that they know would work. Can you imagine how frustrating that must be to somebody who's suffering for epilepsy to be told that cannabis is your medicine of last resort? Go ahead and try all the pharmaceuticals first. Let those fuck up your liver. Let those clog up your bowels. Let those uh, reduce your sex drive. Let's, let those make you into a walking zombie. And then if that doesn't work for you, try another one and see if that works for you. And if that doesn't work for you, try some surgery. Let's cut into your brain and see if that works. And if that doesn't work for you, well, then we'll give you the non-psychoactive, non-addictive cannabis oil with CBD only as a last resort. It's just cruel. That's some backwards shit. Residents of York, Maine could be voting on a symbolic marijuana legalization measure in this November's election. Petitioners for Marijuana Policy Project collected over 200 signatures to present the, le the, le the, pardon me, to present the legislation initiative to the Board of Selectmen, the city council that must approve petitions on the municipal ballot. Similar petitions are ongoing in the cities of Lewiston, where 350 of 850 signatures have been gathered, and South Portland, with 200 of 950 needed signatures. The petition asks that possession of an ounce or less of marijuana for personal purposes be made legal for, for adults 21 and over. Last election, voters in Portland approved the legalization petition, but law enforcement explained they would still enforce Maine state laws on marijuana. Maine, as a state, has already decriminalized the possession of up to two and a half ounces of marijuana for personal use, with no arrest and a civil fine costing $600. So you might look at this situation and say, well, you know, it's just symbolic. These towns, if they, even if they pass these legalizations, it doesn't mean anything. It doesn't really legalize marijuana. And, and gee, why bother? I mean, you've already got decrim for two and a half ounces. It's not as if, you know, uh, Maine is a really tough place to be a, a marijuana smoker. But the point behind these things is this is how professionals pass state legalization. This is how reform is done, especially on the East Coast, where you don't have uh, the possibility of a ballot initiative measure, although you do in Maine. I believe Maine is an initiative state. The point being, though, that they don't start at the state level. They don't start at the state level and say, hey, we're going to legalize for the whole state. They go city by city and slowly build the, uh, the, the momentum for legalization. They can point out to, that, hey, we've passed this in so many cities and, and they all agree with this. This is the exact game plan that was fought in Massachusetts successfully. They went to over 30 cities in Massachusetts and passed these non-binding public policy questions about marijuana decrim and medical. And before you know it, they had medical getting passed. They had decrim getting passed. And in 2016, they might even pass full-scale legalization in Massachusetts. Start from the ground up, people. That's how it's done. Right. They did the same thing in Colorado, Priscilla. They passed uh, stuff in Denver first before they tried anything statewide, right? Yeah, now we're it up. All right. Speaking of that, it's 420 in Denver, so we got to let you go to the... Uh...